This is Ben Brown with BSL Nutrition. I am super pumped to welcome Mike and Sarah Koskinimi. A quick background here. Uh, Mike is the founder of Motions and Sarah, a health and fitness organization that consults and educates personal trainers, strength coaches, and healthcare professionals all over the world. Motions teaches a unique five component system that has gained an international reputation for addressing weight loss, pain relief, and increasing sport performance. Today, Koskinimi is recognized as one of the most experienced and regarded health and fitness professionals in North America. He has provided teachings to renowned personal trainers, strength coaches, and health practitioners from around the world, including practitioners certified in MAT, ART, and Czech. Uh, Koskinimi continues to collaborate with personal trainers, strength coaches, elite coaches from professional leagues and college teams on including the motions protocols into their practice in order to contribute to better and faster results and success. Mike and Sarah, how are you guys? Awesome. We are great. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Absolutely. Like I said, I'm super excited to have you guys. Um, we just had you over for dinner the other night. Mike, uh, well, you guys were in town for a, a Charles Poliquin seminar. And, and you know, like I've said through all of um, my conversations with health practitioners, one of the best things for me, one of the most exciting things is to be able to connect with like-minded professionals. And um, you guys are certainly like-minded. You have young kids just like we do. And and so we definitely are, are speaking the same, are on the same wavelength. So guys, tell me a little bit more about um, your motions business and uh, specifically kind of the five point system you guys use. Well, we've been around now for 16 years. We've helped people lose almost 400,000 pounds of weight in the 16 years. We have 2,400 pound weight loss clients, two of which almost cracked the 200 pound weight loss barrier. Um, yeah, it comes down to helping people by motivating and holding them accountable through five different uh, areas we've selected. And, you know, those are personal training, really giving them one-on-one -on -one counseling, guidance, education. People have a lot of questions and there's a lot of misconceptions out there, especially with uh, social media. You hear all the different professionals kind of try to one-up each other, which leaves people confused. Uh, we also believe that another area is using group community to bring people together together. Uh, you know, humans are a tribal people, so we do better in groups. So using small groups, using large groups, like team groups, uh, to help with the, what I call the reward, the exercise component. Um, nutrition is huge. Nutrition is number one in terms of uh, anything you give to an individual to succeed, from pain management to achieving a, an accomplishment by running a, their first 5K. Um, and there's a lot of things we need to address with people with that. Um, I think it really comes down to just holding people accountable um, and giving them the right education to succeed. Wouldn't you, Sarah? Absolutely. The accountability is huge. We find that the success with our clients comes from those who have hired one of our trainers. Even if it's just a half an hour a week, the guidance is critical to their success and to reaching their goals. And biofeedback's everything. We use before after photos, we use heart rate monitoring uh, to give people biofeedback in terms of their exercise. I mean, a lot of people go to the gym and if you ask them, hey, hey Ben, how was your workout? You say, it's pretty good. Well, what do you mean by pretty good? You're like, uh, I'm not sure. Where our people will actually tell you, well, it was great. I burned this many calories. I was in my fat burning zone for this long. Uh, they can give you all these different uh, numbers that they achieved during that 45, 60 minutes of exercise. So that's hugely motivating for people. Um, you know, and people got to see progress. So if they don't see progress, they're not going to stay motivated. Uh, so we show people, uh, we work from the pain level, we show people their feet. So we actually image their feet and show them how through our corrective strategies, we can change the shape of their feet, which is improving their pain level. We do the same with their eyes. Um, you know, help people gain the convergence and the ability to use their eyes appropriately again. But if we didn't give people all these feedback from, from the scale measurements to the bio measurements, right? Height, weight, uh, chest, arm size, all that, uh, they just would never stay motivated. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the, the objective feedback is huge for people, right? Especially you get type A people that really need to see that immediate, it's sort of that instant gratification. What are my numbers? How are my numbers improving? Whether it's, even if it's a level of perceived exertion or, 
you know, then you're getting heart rate, you're getting body composition measurements, um, orthopedic measurements, all of that's awesome. So how did you guys develop this sort of system over the years? Obviously, you've been in the business for a long time, and, and that is an unbelievable number, you know, amount of weight loss that uh, you guys have accomplished. So kudos to you for that. You don't hear about that very often. So what is it that you're doing that's setting yourself apart from other gyms, um, you know, across the nation? Biggest thing is innovation. Uh, I, I never rest. I'm constantly <laughs> meeting with, you know, professionals from having dinners to going to conferences to, to teaching at seminars to whatever I can do to stay what I consider each day. I try to get another year ahead of everyone. So whatever I can do to absorb and to create a solution for whatever need or symptom that has come across maybe a Facebook message or someone that's walked in the door. So innovation is the biggest thing. And I guess what blows everyone's minds is that we're only in a town of 20,000 people. So all these numbers that people see from revenue to weight loss to other things, that's why we're sought after and people bring us all over the globe to work with them. Because in America, fitness is the second hardest category of business there is. Restaurants are number one. So restaurants fail, right? They open, they close. And you see the same in regards to fitness. Something will open, something closes. A fitness professional will start their career and then they switch careers. Um, so it's our job to um, show people that it is possible. And I mean, and with only a population of 20,000 people, we're not dealing with 3 million people. Uh, 6 million people, 14 million people, but technology has helped us to, to do that. So ever since technology, technology has come about, I've been really progressive and innovative with it. So we're, we used to teach to entire elementary schools exercise. So they would start their day. So 800 elementary kids would exercise with us via Skype. Um, so we've always utilized Skype and phone counseling and all these different avenues of technology to get to the greater population around the world. And I think that's the biggest thing is just our innovation. I, and I think a lot of it has been digging deeper, finding the solution. Uh, what are people having problems with? What do we need to do? How can we educate ourselves more, teach our staff more, and how can we find the right solutions for the populations that we're dealing with? And I think that's been huge too. It's not staying stagnant, but continually trying to improve our game and like Mike said, innovate in different ways to get the result that they're looking for. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, it's working with people. Uh, I don't claim to have every answer in the world. I, I claim to have the best people around me so I can reach out um, and I can get answers and solutions within seconds where maybe other people it's going to take years. And that's a really rewarding thing. Um, and we all need that. So just like I reach out to certain people, those people reach out to me in regards to other areas. So it, it all comes on to people. We're a, we're a tribal population and we need each other to improve, grow and to succeed. So when, when someone walks into your gym, what are the things that you look for with them or what, or what are the ways that you communicate with them to help you determine how successful they're going to be? Um, and, and, and using that sort of that five point system is, is how do you determine like what nutritional strategies you're going to use, what types of and, and amount and volume of physical activity, how much accountability they need, how much community support, um, what are your tools to help quantify that? Well, we have a big 50 page intake form. So we try to under, uncover everything from their history, from birth to the moment they walk in the door or they call us on the phone, et cetera. And I really, I start with two questions. Number one is, what do you want from me today? Because I believe in two things. I believe I got to deliver an immediate result. Why? The person that's come to us for this solution or need has seen five different professionals. They see in an orthopedist, they see in a nutritionist, they've gone here, they've spent money there, um, and they're tired and they, this is their last hope. So I want to know what will make them happy today. Uh, and once they tell me that, we'll create that immediate change. Now, number two to that is permanent. I, I want to make sure this is long lasting and we'll stick with them. So um, through the information we can gather through them, um, it'll help us better create that, that pathway, that road to their final destination. Uh, and it takes a while, right? Because yeah. people have to know, like, and trust you. 
So that, is that going to happen in 15 minutes? Nope. But that's where I, I call it the 12 month recalibration. We're going to recalibrate them from the inside out. And this is going to take a lot of feedback, uh, a lot of questions, a lot of answers. And as people start to know, like, and trust us, they start to open up more. And every day they come in, they're like, Oh, guess what? Oh, guess what? You know, that one question you asked me and I wasn't sure now I know. Um, or, or someone might need from childhood, they might need time to think about their relationship with their mother or their relationship with their father and how that either positively or negatively uh, impacted them. So there's a lot of different things we look um, around what we call globally around the person because it's just not one factor that's going to get the, the solution and the success that they're looking for. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think we can all agree that there's so much more to the weight loss process than just exercise and nutrition. And so by creating that community approach, um, embracing the long-term journey, I, it sounds like you're really setting your clients up for, for that long-term success. So what, what have you noticed to be sort of the common denominator in terms of when a client comes in and they have a significant amount of weight to lose, or even if they only have, you know, that, that 10 or 15 pounds that they've just kind of been going up and down with their whole life, what is the, you know, common denominator of, of finally, like, I'm ready to commit to the program, I'm ready to get rid of this weight once and for all, um, whereas so many people, um, you know, will say that they're ready to do it, but in actuality, they, they haven't necessarily found why it is that they want to get rid of it. Well, you know, it really comes down to the trans theoretical model of change. There's five stages of change. And each of these levels go from six months to five years. And you can switch between the stages. The first stage is pre-contemplation, Ben. Pre-contemplation is when the person doesn't want to talk about it, right? You, you see the person out and, and you're like, hey, you should come to the gym. And they're like, I don't even want to talk about it. Get away from me. That's pre-contemplation. But, you know, six months to uh, five years later, you're going to bump into that person again. And now they're going to say, you know what? I've been thinking about it. So now they're contemplating making a change. Is it nutritionally? Is it exercise-wise? What, what lifestyle factor is it? Um, and then six months to so five years after that, they're going to start to prepare. They're going to prepare. So they're going to say, like, I was checking out gyms. I was checking out your gym. I was reading these websites. So as they start to prepare, they're getting ready to take action. And, and the fourth stage is action. And this is when the person will walk in the door. I mean, the hardest thing for any person to do is to ask for help. And this is either picking up the phone, calling a professional, or walking in the door. I mean, we have people, once a week we'll have someone come in the door crying. And, and this person has been driving around the block for usually two weeks. It seems like the standard's two weeks. So like, I've been driving by for two weeks, and I just got the courage up today to walk in. Um, and then that's where we need to take them by the hand and softly uh, approach whatever symptoms and solutions they're looking for. And then the fifth level of, of change is maintenance. And remember, maintenance, it doesn't mean it's gonna, it's gonna last forever because what happens if it's a woman, she's being successful, she's 63 years old, but then her husband dies. Yeah. She's gonna go from uber success, weight loss, all this to back to pre-contemplation. Why her, the, the most important person in her life just passed away, her, her world is destroyed, and now she's erasing everything. So now, it's sort of what I call 25 to life because each stage is six months to five years. So if you five times five is 25. So this is a, a 25 to life uh, progression. And you have to be able to work with people to bounce between the stages and understand them at different levels. And I think that's another innovative thing that we do. We work on blockages and blockages are, uh, it could be an emotional block. It could be a physical block. Um, and, and we're ready to adapt to any way that changes at any moment for an individual. Phenomenal. You know, um, that's something that we see so frequently is as people are going through this, this change process, it's obviously not just a, a physical change, but it's a significant mental and emotional change. And, and a lot of times people aren't necessarily equipped. Well, there's, there's two, two areas. There's sometimes people get psychologically and emotionally ready and then they're just ready to go and they hit the physical and nail it. And then conversely is we see that people undergo this immense physical change, but psychologically, emotionally, they're still in the same place. And then all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, what am I supposed to do? Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, have 
the same social support system. Um, I, I still have the same emotional issues. How am I going to cope with this, which often contributes to, um, you know, falling back into their old ways. So, so what do you got? How do you guys deal with that? Really, we look at it, you know, the psycho-emotional is the largest blockage we have. And there's five emotions we look at, uh, rejection, abandonment, humiliation, betrayal, and injustice. So each one of these five emotions bring with it a mask, a mask that people learn to wear through their lifetime. So, you know, because people want to hide things and they want everyone to assume everything's perfect and this, um, and this emotional uh, issue and this mask they've created is usually related to the parent of the opposite sex or the parent of the same sex. So it's either daughter and mother or daughter and father uh, relationship and something that's happened along the way that's created this. So uh, maybe, you know, the father just left home and now the daughter's feeling rejected or abandoned. This is going to have certain psychological issues that are going to keep uh, manifesting through different stages of their life and, and in different ways. And this is the, the hardest and the, the biggest blockage that we deal with on a daily, weekly, and annual level. Um, and I guess what's our biggest solution for it is forgiveness. I mean, people, you know, is teaching people to understand what happened, come to terms with it, and then forgive people and there's different ways to forgive. You can write a forgiveness letter. You can speak to the person about forgiveness or, you know, you can just uh, forgive. Um, so I, I think that really blows people's minds when they, when you start to get into that area, the psycho emotional and it, they, they need time to think about it and where along the journey of life did this happen to them? Yeah. I'm so glad that you're talking about this stuff. This is the stuff that people need to hear about is we're so inundated with eat this, not that, you know, um, yeah. I mean, it's just do this type of exercise, avoid this type of exercise, do this diet, do this detox. And, and, and man, it's so much deeper than that. And so I, I just love and have so much respect for the fact that you guys are made, you know, how you've made this such a big part of uh, your systems in terms of creating change. And obviously it's working out for you um, with the massive change that you've created. Uh, let's take a step back and talk to me about like what spurred this whole uh, what what spurred this journey for you guys to to really get into this field to want to help so many people? What you know what has influenced it? Really, it goes back to my twelfth birthday. Um, ever since I've been about, I've been an athlete ever since I was born. And in, where I'm from in Marquette, Michigan, hockey's number one, right? Yeah. We're almost in Canada, so hockey's number one. So I played. I've actually been on skates since I've been two and a half. So as I got older, about ten years old, I really got interested in this weight training thing. But at that time, in the, in the late 80s, they, they thought that weight training would stunt your growth and have mm -hmm. all these other negative – it was crazy. Yeah, totally. So my, my, my physician said, I don't want you to start strength training until you turn 12 years old. So on the morning of my 12th birthday is when I did my first full body workout. <laughs> now, this is 1988. So there's really no such thing as a personal trainer. There's really – this is the bodybuilding era. This is when Schwarzenegger just ended. You have Lee Haney. You have all these really cool new, um, like superheroes of the bodybuilding days. And so my parents just decided that on vacations and all this, we would travel around and we would visit different uh, powerhouses, Gold's gyms, World gyms, and I'd get to meet some of these uh, bodybuilding professionals and anyone that I could gather insight from in education. And at the same time, there really wasn't much in terms of literature. There was a couple bodybuilding magazines and that, but there wasn't much. So I picked up my father's uh, college books. Um, I picked up his college nutrition book, his college physiology, his college anatomy. And at 12 years old, I began reading that. So that's when this deep foundation of knowledge really started to set in. And I just started to chase it from there. And then as, as I progressed in sports, people – uh, started to say, Hey, if you do anything with this fitness stuff, we would love to take part in it. So as I got older in high school, I, I had an 
awesome, awesome hockey career. And then after hockey, I did a little bit of bodybuilding, which was fun. Uh, got me into that world and that culture. Uh, but through this all, what we kept seeing was performance increasing, but at the same time we saw injury rates and other symptoms increase with it. So you would think as people get bigger, better, stronger, as our concepts get better, that injury and symptoms would go down as everything increased. So this is, you know, in, in the late 90s when we started to see the whole functional uh, medicine approach come in terms of movement. So this is when you saw Gray Cook come out with the uh, functional movement system. This is when you saw um, Gray Cook uh, come out with all of his uh, matrices. And so we really started to think globally of how the body moved, how it worked. Um, and then as we transitioned into the 2000s, we started to understand that um, – that maybe these isolated ways we were trying to look at the human isn't the right approach. And now this is when we're globally looking at people. But through this process then, um, I decided to start my business. And I reached out to four of the people that said, if you're, or if you're ever going to do anything, I want to jump aboard. And from four people uh, and those four emails, they all said yes. So kudos and thank you to those four people because – if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be where we are today, helping thousands and thousands of people, uh, developing over 100 fitness professionals, and meeting people like you. So it's really cool. So wait a sec. So you're 12 years old, you start pumping iron, and your parents are like, well, we're just going to travel around and go kind of from gym to gym. What, if you don't mind me asking, what did your parents do? And you obviously must have been pretty passionate about this for them to kind of support you that way. Yeah. I think that was the biggest thing is like how awesome they supported it. No, were they skeptical? I mean, the first time I brought home a jar of protein powder, my mom kind of flipped out. She's like, whoa, whoa, whoa what's this? You know, yeah. like, is it steroids? Is it? Um, because, you know, it was in 91 is when steroids became illegal. So in 91 wow. is when you saw this big explosion of supplements. So yeah. I've grown with every supplement company I've, I've, I've seen it, I've tasted, I've touched it, I understand it. Um, so yeah, so it was things like that. They, you know, at moments they were skeptical, but they saw my passion and they saw it, it was truly benefiting me and they just went along with it. And I think, uh, I, I thank them for that. And I think it helps me look at my children and I hope other people learn from it that when you see passion from a person, let's, you know, help to cultivate that and who knows where it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep it real for your kids. Right. And they, yeah. they don't, uh, they, they'll pick up on that. You can't, you can't hide, hide anything from them. So you yeah. might as well just, yeah. just be honest about it. And even though, you know, you're grinding it out day in, day out, working a ton of hours. I mean, I know you guys are so good about taking the kids with you certain yeah. places and, and real traveling abroad, tra uh, traveling nationally and just bring the kids. I mean, why not? Why not them see you do what you're passionate about and you're obviously passionate about helping people. And so that's definitely um, probably a strong influence around them. So Sarah, what, what kind of led you into this realm and, and then how did the two of you get connected and how did this come to be? Well, I've been an athlete just like my most of my life. I played basketball from the time I was probably in second grade all the way through college. So being active and, you know, wanting to stay in shape, you know, basketball was my passion, but when I wasn't playing basketball, I was, you know, doing something like active push-ups, that's running, whatever it may be. I didn't sit still. So, and then once basketball was over, I, kept on the workout train like I didn't just want to be stagnant it was a passion I go to the gym well then I met Mike post-college um, I studied business and then I went back to school to get my degree in elementary education so I had a business degree and an education degree I met Mike and he was in this world which was great because yeah. I didn't know that prior to meeting him but it was good because we had so much in common and then I learned so much more from him so I finished my degree in teaching and, you know, at this time he was running his business and I kind of started to, to work into that where I was teaching uh, large groups mm -hmm. and also uh, doing some personal training as well and, and business stuff. So it was a great fusion of my 
business degree and my teaching degree because I was getting to teach and manage what I truly loved. And to be able to help people change their lives and feel good about themselves and give them confidence is priceless. So, uh, you know, we've loved this journey together and working together and uh, yeah, it only gets better every day. So that's kind of how we, we met and we realized this common link and it's only helped build our relationship stronger, but also helped us to help many people. So it's great. Yeah. Nice. It's uh, it's awesome that you guys get the opportunity to kind of work together on a day in day out basis. Kudos to you for, being able to do that I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah it's not always easy but yeah we, we're kind of yin and yang so we we uh bring out the best in each other i feel he's made me stronger and smarter in a lot of ways and i feel like i compliment him well so. absolutely yes the key to any good relationship is, yeah. is certainly to have that yin and yang and say that my wife is uh He's uh, my, certainly my biggest supporter, but she's also the biggest devil's advocate. <laughs> Any new idea that I have, which is, is good. She helps me be more analytical. Um, so, okay. So we've got our five point system. And while we know that you know, nutrition and training isn't the end all be all, certainly isn't the end all be all. We do know the importance of nutrition and of course, physical activity, but especially nutrition when it comes to facilitating weight loss. So in a nutshell, give me your guys nutritional philosophy that, that you incorporate. And I'm sure it's individualized, but the main idea that you kind of try and instill and, and principles that you instill with, with the majority of your weight loss clients. It really comes down to uh, their genotype and their phenotype. I mean, their genotype is their, their genetic material, you know, what they have the potential to become. So if they want that six pack, if they want to be a person that runs half marathons, it, so genetically, are they predisposed for this, number one? And then, you know, number two is their phenotype. And the, the, the phenotype comes out of the genes plus the environment. So now everything they've been doing since they've been boring, um, to achieve this or not to achieve this. So we take all those factors uh, in conjunction. We, uh, we firmly believe in uh, a lot of testing, so not only the genetic testing, but we do all the Cyrix autoimmune testing. Really, that's looking at, at those environmental factors uh, from chemical to metals to all the foods they put in um, and any other things they're dealing with. We also look at all the, the hormonal issues, the androgens, estrogens, uh, cortisols, uh, sleep, you know, melatonin uh, so we really try to get this global perspective for a person and teach them about that and say here's what we're collecting about you um, and then as they understand that we then get them to start to adopt the appropriate changes that are great for them because if it's a person and they have um, uh, a high uh, they digest caffeine quickly or they digest yeah, sure. slowly or if they're uh, carbohydrate sensitive um, it's getting them to make the appropriate changes to genetically help them uh, and then with the environment to support that. I guess nutritionally right now, we have massive amounts of data, which everyone would assume with 400,000 pounds of weight loss. And what we did, so we took six months ago, we took all the data and we said, we want number one is immediate change and number two is permanent. So when someone loses weight, we don't want to see them gain it back. So what we saw then six months ago was we saw that half of our people were gaining it back and half weren't. So we wanted to understand what was that mechanism that was creating that. And we, it came down to carbohydrates, plain and simple. Those clients that uh, reinstituted a certain level of carbohydrate intake, got all their symptoms back, gained all their weight back and basically started at square one. Those that kept the carbohydrate intake low or none, kept their success period whatever the success was they kept all of it which is that is hugely powerful yeah. so over this last six months now it's really trying to teach people how now to adopt a lower carbohydrate uh diet now what does that mean it can be anywhere from 100 grams a day to 70 grams down to 20 grams yeah. it depends on the motivation of the person right their lifestyle so we're not going to push anyone into something that's just not going to be comfortable uh, or appropriate for their life. Um, but also 
you know, ultimately it is their life. So they got to decide what's the most important, you know, their success or I guess uh, the life around them. But uh, Sarah and I were talking, we were driving this morning and we're like laughing. We're like, well, I don't know if laughing or crying or getting mad. Like people really confuse carbohydrates. They really have a hard time getting the low, no carbohydrate thing. Like no matter what you do with a human, if you take something away, you have to give the human something. And the best part of the low carbohydrate thing, you get to give people fat. I mean, fat is the most delicious part of any meal. Um, it gives you all the satiety, so you're never hungry with a certain level of fat. But people can't wrap their head around. They're like, whoa, 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 you mean if I go low carb, no carb, I can eat upwards of 75% fat every day? And it's like, yes, and actually you need to. Because it's, it's just incredible, Ben, that over 50 grams of carbohydrate intake a day really changed the way sodium, saturated fat, triglycerides, just to name a few, how they switch form and become negative for the human being. So all those people that have gone to their doctors or they've read this and read that and they said, uh, make sure you don't have an, an intake of 2,400 milligrams of sodium a day. Make sure your saturated fat is below this. Make sure your triglycerides, all that changes as soon as you remove carbohydrates. And people got to understand that carbohydrates are a non-essential nutrient, non-essential. That means you don't need it whatsoever. Um, but you know, the way we've been educated and from the politics, from the media, they've really gotten us to buy in that low fat, high carbohydrates, the way to go, but it, it's erasing that now once and for all. And the people that are really starting to buy in they're the success we're seeing on them is even, uh, going to another level now. It's amazing. It's so amazing to see the success. Yeah. And just the way they feel, their energy yeah. levels, and it, it's it's incredible. I guess so. professionally, the biggest thing that we had this year that happened professionally that wakes us up to this is Bob Harper. Bob Harper had his massive heart attack. That's true. And, and I complained about Bob's interview on the Today Show uh, in the fall. He went on and said, everyone needs to start having a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet. And it wasn't even four months later that he had a heart attack that almost killed him. And that's the exact diet that creates cardiovascular disease. I'm like, so I hope professionally we start to wake up when one of our biggest celebrity guys is doing the wrong thing and has a negative consequence. So I hope that wakes us up professionally. But then I also hope client-wise and population-wise, they start to go, all right, now, let's really start to understand the impact of carbohydrates, but how we can better improve the outcome through increasing fat appropriately, increasing sodium intake appropriately, because sodium is number two. Um, the brain is brilliant. The brain, I'm, I'm astonished by the brain every day, and it's what I've studied. I mean, I got my doctorate in psychology, and every day I'm just in awe of the brain. So your body, if you're in a depletion of sodium, so on a low-carbohydrate diet, it's a natural diuretic diet. So you already have a low sodium but your heart works on the sodium potassium pumps. So potassium follows sodium. So you're excreting and eliminating sodium all day with low carbs, which means you get to have a lot of sodium and sodium and fat are what makes everything taste great. You know, if you look at the research in terms of addiction, like look at the research they've taken on uh, sugar, fat, and salt. So carbohydrates, fat, and sodium versus cocaine. I mean, when they're in combination, sugar, fat, salt, they have the same outcome as uh, cocaine. I mean, think about that. So as soon as you eliminate the carbohydrate portion, um, that's when you get your benefit uh, on, on a positive outcome. So uh, getting people to wrap their heads around that uh, for breakfast, now, now you get to have three scrambled eggs and a cup of bouillon. Bouillon is broth, so beef broth, chicken broth. Um, and especially if you're going to have a major workout, because uh, if you're going to, the bowls of oatmeal are gone, Sarah. <laughs> See you later. You know, the, rid of those long time ago. you know, the, 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 the bagels, uh, the bowls of frosted flakes with skim milk, um, yeah. it's got to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and we're even seeing that, uh, the benefit of getting people off of say, uh, fruit like bananas, um, sure. you know, cause I love it. Everyone, if I ask people, why do you have a banana every morning? And, their answer is uh, for the potassium. <laughs> and then I actually show them the potassium level of a banana. 
and they're such like I didn't know it was that little versus like an avocado or right. and think about an avocado is all fat. Right. <laughs> okay, I love it. So, so your kind of broad spectrum recommendations for clients, kind of regardless. Obviously, you do the individualized stuff. You find out what type of caffeine receptors they have. You know, you get into what sort of food sensitivities they have, what their genetic expression may indicate that they need from a nutritional perspective. Um, but all that aside is your, your recommendations generally are, are low to very low carb uh, diet. And, and essentially, so people understand is, is that would range, are, are you suggesting that most people would be in a, in a ketogenic diet state or that it just really would range from like a, a low carb, moderate protein to kind of a, a high fat, um, low to moderate protein type diet? Preferentially, uh, we would like to get everyone ketogenic if we could. I mean, think about it. Ketones carry around an extra oxygen. So if someone's fatigued, they, they lack energy, uh, they want more energy and all that, get them ketogenic. We'll give them that automatic just by having more ketones flowing through your bloodstream. Yeah. Um, you know, it's those lifestyle factors that are really the hiccup, you know, are, are people right. able to, you know, because the women that we work with that have two or three children, you know, as they're making macaroni and they're making all these different uh, food items for their children, they, they don't want to inundate themselves with having to make all these different selections trying to accomplish something. Of course. Uh, it, it's trying to make it easy for people to understand that um, everyone can uh, have their cake and eat it too, so to say. So um, it's kind of like uh, <laughs> getting people ketogenic and then figuring out from there um, at, at what level. Are they going to cross over and just be low carbohydrate or are they going to be ketogenic? Um, and – I guess another striking thing from the research is finding that, you know, once protein starts to exceed 21% of your diet, it starts to act like um, carbohydrates in, term, carb. in terms of insulin reactivity. Sure. Think about that. So these guys, these bodybuilders, right, that we consult with, and they're taking in, you know, 60% 60, 60 of their diet is protein, and they're having these last bits of issues with, um, you know, the fat around the midsection, so their six pack's not coming in the way they like. Um, they're they're having lower back issues. They're not getting lean enough, and they they're mind blown when we drop their protein intake in half, double their fat intake because their carbohydrates on these guys are already minimal. Sure. Boom, so we just do this flip, and right away within seven days, their body fat percentage will drop another two to three percent. All these features will come in that they're looking for and they thought the whole solution was high protein right um so I, you know and this is i guess when we come back to uh having sound information knowledgeable people around us that can give us the answers and the data to give us the solution and success we're looking for and then obviously giving people the tools to to like understand like what is ketogenic what does a typical day look like and how do i realistically implement it with my busy lifestyle with my kids with my job like it's a whole it's a whole different ball game it is to learn how to eat that way so just just so i'm clear and what i'm understanding is what your dad is suggesting over your up um, around 400,000 pounds of weight loss through your career is that the people that are going closer to, if not fully ketogenic, at least in, I'm assuming in the more recent years, are yes. having the most long-term success when they're staying in that sort of ketogenic state or at least very low carb. Exactly. Yes. Okay. okay. Cool. And so that's, so that's what you're doing with most of your clients. So with regard to... We won't, we won't go too much into, into the ketogenic, but kind of what does a typical day look like for your average client from a nutrition? Let's just say it's, let's just say it's a middle-aged female. She has one child. She comes in and gets a personal training session, you know, um, after, uh, you know, maybe kids in daycare or something like that. What does a typical day look like for her from a ketogenic nutrition standpoint? I say if it's a middle-aged mother who is going to work out in the morning, they're going to get up um, and they're going to have some sort of uh, pre-workout, intro workout and post-workout nutrition wrapped around their early morning workout. Okay. Uh, they, might, they might get up and they might do the lime and salt uh, to really massage their adrenals, to kickstart kick the metabolism. 
Um, and then they might use uh, your product, the BSL uh, Essential Aminos, and not might. Uh, everyone that knows yes, us, that is exactly <laughs> what they're going to use. They're going to use uh, a serving of essential aminos with a serving of uh, concrete creatine uh, for the energy uh, pre-workout. Uh, it's going to depend on their outcomes and wants. Um, so if they're an ind individual that lacks energy during the workout, we may prescribe an intra workout shake of the same formula. And then post-workout, most, most females are have, have digestive issues. So we have to give them di digestive health solutions. So post-workout, they'll potentially once again have essential aminos with glutamine mm -hmm. to help with restoring the digestive health. Um, after that, um, and they get home, they shower, they do all that, they uh, will have their first meat and nut breakfast. So if they choose anything from steak. Bacon, cashews. Yeah. What else? Switch it up, chicken and macadamias. What else? Oh. <laughs> I know, I know, but you see, there's Sometimes so. I, bacon, eggs. I guess we just want to say there's a lot of options. Lots so when you options. there's there's tons of different kinds of nuts, there's tons of different meats, and variety, variety. is key. Uh, that's one of the biggest yeah. things been that we're t working with people is variety because uh, when we're working with the Cyrix and the uh, autoimmune testing and the food sensitivities what's busting people especially uh the health professionals we're working with these people are ocd and they're trying to do things right but what that means is they're doing the same thing every day so their their food sensitivities may come back so out of 180 foods they'll have five sensitivities one of you almonds because <laughs> they eat almonds every day so now they've built up antibodies and antigens to almonds yep eggs could be another one so now we have to eliminate these foods for six months and then reintroduce them and teach these people, you know, from medical professionals to health professionals, how to either have the products for a week, take, the, take another week off, or to cycle it through the week. So on uh, Mondays, they're going to have this certain uh, type of diet. Tuesdays are going to have these food selections. So there's a rotation. Sure. Uh, and, you know, humans want to auto-program everything. Uh, they just want to set it and forget it. But with nutrition and our body, we need to get better at adapting right. to a, a revolving nutrition plan. So, and but yeah, but then, but then, but then for lunch, we're going to come in and we're going to have a gorgeous salad. So like, greens, you got to have those micronutrients. So great greens, spinach, um, so maybe some salmon, salmon on it. Olive oil based dressing or any kind of oil, avocado oil, olive oil and vinegar. Yep. Throw some good veggies on it, and then she's. I always tell people you're gonna to get to eat like a king and a queen. Oh, yeah. So what this woman is thinking now, she's eating the best meats. She's having the best cheeses if she's not lactose intolerant or has any sensitivities to lactose. She's having great olives. I mean, think about all these just great yeah, foods great. that you get to you get to choose from now. So uh, mm -hmm. mid afternoon, mid afternoon, probably gonna choose something. It could be. Um, Anything, it depends on the individual. It could be uh, cottage cheese with uh, something. It could be just um, a serving size of cashews. Yeah. Um, hard-boiled eggs are a good one. If, hard, you have, if, they didn't have, if you didn't have hard-boiled eggs or eggs for breakfast, I think eggs are a great afternoon snack. Yes. Eggs. With some avocado slices, maybe. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then for dinner, you're going back to your salad, so you're going to choose another great meat, put it on a bed of lettuce, and dressings. People need to start on the ketogenic, low carb, understanding dressings and the power behind it and how delicious it makes every single food you're preparing. Yeah. So being able to choose some. Yeah, I would say like, well, I go back to, I cook a lot with oils, coconut oil, you know, olive oils, olive oil, vinegars to help with the digestive system again. So you're only limited by your creativity. So it's just about, you know, finding out what has what what's good what you can eat what reacts well to your system and keeping you know the fat high and the carbohydrates yes. low. So. It, it comes back to asking for help people have to learn to ask for help faster so we do a lot of grocery store tours we take our clients and people all over the world to grocery stores to um uh, trader joe's uh whole foods wherever we're at someone's like can you walk me through and show me where all this stuff is because the biggest thing, everyone's so busy. They're, they're so self-contained in their life that if we can just take 50 minutes once and show them through Whole Foods or Trader Joe's in their, in their community where everything is, 
We just sped up the process. Now they're not confused. Now they're not going to get stuck on old habits. And they feel confident. Yeah, yes. confidence is everything. But also in the home, going into the home and reorganizing the kitchen, going through the fridge, going through the freezer, going through the cabinets, um, going through utensils. Maybe they don't have certain measuring components that they never understood or don't know where to get. So by two simple uh, sessions, you know, less than two hours, a person just went from being so confused and scared now to being super successful. I mean, that's just, that's powerful. So that all seems really doable. The, the real question then becomes, Mike and Sarah, what about my wine? What am I going to do about that? <laughs> you know what? You got to celebrate life. Remember, alcohol came in our life as a celebration. And somewhere along the way, we, we, we turned it into a medicine, right? Um, so it's, it's going to choosing better options. So like I said, you get to eat like a king and queen again. A great low-carb option is champagne. I mean, think about that. You get to have a great steak, a, a, a little lettuce, a little salad, and then some great olives, and then a glass of champagne. I mean, right. I that's phenomenal. I think it's planning wisely, too. If you plan, you say you know, you do your research, and you're looking at your day, and yep. where can you have the glass of wine you want to relax? And you're really going to enjoy it then, too, if you plan yeah. it. Your research, so you, you want to moderate. It, it, it all comes in a bottle every night. Does it? It, come, okay. it comes back to amino acids, right? It comes down to neurotransmitters. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you can still, so what you're saying is you can still have a glass of wine. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. On your diet. And yes. as yeah, we, I mean, know. we want to enjoy life too. Yeah, so yeah. it just depends on what level right. of low carb you are. If you are ketogenic, you cannot go over 50 grams of carbohydrates a day. So if that glass of wine fits within your numbers, you are clear to go. If it's going to blow you out of your numbers, then you have to deal with the consequences. Right. And that's where you have to make sometimes the decision of what's more important. It's a healthy balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. Remember, alcohol is a sedative hypnotic. It's the only sedative hypnotic that's over counter. All the others you have to get a prescription for. That's true. So when I, was taught, when I just mentioned uh, amino acids and neurotransmitters and all the B vitamins, remember, the neurotransmitters are what keep us um, level-headed and not anxious and not depressed, but people will use alcohol to help remedy these issues. Where once they go low-carb, remember, your protein goes up. All your B, B vitamins come from this increase of protein. So now you're giving your body the nutrients that it needs to build the right neurotransmitters. So that need for alcohol for most individuals drops substantially. And then that's when they start to turn it back to a celebration Versus component. So now I'm going to have my glass of champagne on a birthday, or I'm going to choose my glass of wine when it's my parents' anniversary or whatever it is. So looking globally at the whole human and the nutrition factor, that's how things can get sidestepped very easily. Awesome. Awesome. Um, all right, guys, with that, I think, uh, I think we'll wrap it up, but yeah, um, I want to thank you so much for your time. For those of you that are listening that are interested in, in losing weight, you're attempting to lose weight, you're working with a trainer, I want you to take some of these points into consideration, some of these areas that you may not necessarily be addressing, um, and you know, let us know what we can do to help. For those of you that are trainers that are helping people facilitate this process. Same thing is, are you just addressing the nutrition and training? Are you addressing these other components that people absolutely need in order to be successful? You know, we have to meet people where they're at and then we have to help build them up to be successful long term. So hopefully this is, this is valuable for you to be able to do that. Uh, Mike and Sarah, two things. One is, because we talked about ketogenic dieting, where can people find out more information? What's a good resource for people to turn to um, that may have just listened to this and say, well, what the heck is that? How can I find out more? Uh, a good resource, a great one is Atkins. Atkins okay. was a leader. Uh, it's easily digestible for uh, the mass population. Uh, and look for updated materials. So look for things that are newer than 2002. Uh, and you'll find those on Amazon and everything else. That's a great way to do it. Uh, for professional, uh, good, 
Good Calories, Bad Calories by Gary Tobbs is a, a great one that'll really give you insight into uh, a lot of the myths and the stuff we're dealing with professionally. Um, and then uh, Dr. Dom, huh? Yeah. Our great colleague. Uh, so if they look in the goal of ketogenic and maybe you want to steer people towards uh, Dr. Dom and the ketones. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's, um, and I guess I'll provide a link, but Dom D'Agostino, who is a big time researcher in the, in the field of ketogenic diets, and he's doing some very, very cool stuff. Uh, yes. Um, yes. And to be fair, there's really a significant amount of research that goes behind these ketogenic diet recommendations. Is it right for everyone? I don't know, but it certainly um, is proving to be successful in many different realms, as you guys are certainly uh, showing. Uh, second thing is, guys, where can people find more about you? How can people contact you? Hey, guys, uh, you can look for Mike Koskinemi on Facebook, Sarah Koskinemi on Facebook, yep. motionsfitness.com. You can send us uh, an email. The biggest thing is we are now have a clinic in Phoenix, Arizona, and you will be able to catch us in London, England, too. So um, just send us a show. We'll let you know when Absolutely. we're in one of these different locations, and we will help you, the professional, or you, the person wanting change. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome, guys. Congratulations on the new clinics. Make sure to hit me up next time you're in town, Yay. of course. And, you know uh, it. Absolutely. Say hi to the family for us. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Keep doing great work. Hey, you too. Thank you. Have a good day. Talk to you later.